Let's talk about Vorons, and more specifically, Voron clones. If you've been on the internet lately, you've no doubt heard of the Sovel SV08. It's a derivative of the Voron 2.4 design, which is made for the mass market. Sovel has taken the open source designs of Voron and commercialized them in such a way to make a very high performing printer, which previously would require a great deal of assembly, into a turnkey solution that you can purchase, unbox, and be up and running in a very short period of time. But Sovel are not the first ones to implement this strategy. Before them came Formbot with the Trudon 2.0. Formbot set out with the same goal, to take the great design provided by the Voron team and make it more accessible for those that aren't interested in building a 3D printer from scratch. Prior to the Trudon, Formbot offered Voron kits, which was one step in the right direction to making Vorons more accessible. Because prior to the kits, you would need to source the entire bill of materials yourself, which would be prohibitive for a lot of people. The other thing that can be prohibitive is the lengthy build process in order to take those parts and turn them into a functioning 3D printer. So when offering a kit, the Voron immediately became more accessible to the average user. Then they took it a step further by offering the mostly pre-assembled Trudon 2.0 which takes many of the design elements of the Voron and turns it into a ready-made printer with just some basic assembly steps required to get up and running. So on one hand, we have the Sovel SV08. On the other hand, we have the Trudon 2.0, two derivatives of the Voron 2.4 design with the same goal, taking a great 3D printer and making it more accessible to the masses. But what compromises needed to be made by each of these companies in order to bring the Voron to the mass market? Unfortunately, I don't own the Sovel SV08, but what I do have are the source CAD files, the marketing material provided by Sovel, as well as all of the knowledge I've gleaned by watching a variety of reviews from my fellow YouTubers. So throughout this video, if you see a reference on screen with credit to another creator, I want you to go to the description, look up their channel, and go and watch their dedicated reviews of the Sovel SV08 if you would like to learn more. The Trudon 2.0 predates the SV08 by a few years. In fact, there was an original Trudon, which was based on an earlier implementation of the Voron design. I believe it was the V1.8. This also had the flying gantry, which is a staple of the Voron 2.4. Then came the Trudon 2.0 a few years later. And a few years after that, Sovel came forth with the SV08. So what's different between these two printers, and is there a clear winner? Well, there are a few fundamental differences that I've observed in my analysis of these printers. And in order to assure you that I'm qualified to talk on this, you may be interested in viewing my entire playlist of videos on the Trudon 2.0. I've created a multi-part series which documented this printer in detail over the course of its evolution. And it has evolved quite substantially from the time it was first released until now. The Trudon 2.0 is in its second iteration and it is now the Pro model. When comparing the Trudon 2.0 Pro to the Sovel SV08, the very first thing you're likely to look at is the price tag. The SV08 retails for $579 USD or $799, including the enclosure and the upgraded touchscreen. The Trudon 2.0 comes with the enclosure and the touchscreen by default, so the price tag is higher than the base model of the SV08 just by default. The overall price of the Trudon is $1,050, including the shipping charge within the continental US. So there's a $250 premium to get the Trudon over the SV08. I should also mention that the Trudon comes in two sizes. The one you see here is the Mini, which is 250 by 250 by 230. The price tag of the Mini is lower than the 2.0 at $599, but that makes it more expensive than the SV08, which is substantially larger. So is the cost differential justified? Well, we're going to take a closer look and find out. We're going to go step by step through the features and functionality of these two printers, comparing them apples to apples to see which reigns supreme. So starting with the build volume. The build volume is 350 by 350 by 330 for the Trudon 2.0 and 350 by 350 by 345 for the SV08. Part of the difference in that build volume is the fact that the Trudon has a lid on it, given that it is fully enclosed whereas the SV08 has more headroom above it because the umbilical cord can come out the top of the printer. So once you enclose the SV08, it is quite likely that the build volume will be comparable to the Trudon 2.0. Speaking of that umbilical cable, the electronics are another area where these printers differ. 
The Sovel SV08 comes by default with a CAN bus umbilical setup for the tool head wiring, whereas the Trudon 2.0 uses drag chains. However, the cable that runs through this drag chain is also a form of bus cable. It's not CAN bus, but it is an integrated wiring loom that plugs into the tool board with a single connector. So if you desire, you can take the cable chain off of this printer and run it in an umbilical setup, which is something that I did on my Trudon. All of the electronics on both of these printers are proprietary. They both have their own tool boards and main boards that are designed specifically for these printers. On the SV08, we have a unified main board with an integrated Pi compute module to handle all of the clipper computations. On the Trudon, we have a standalone motherboard and a separate Big Tree Tech Pi clone. This gives us more USB ports, it gives us a LAN port, and we have all of the regular Pi GPIO pins that we could use to mod and upgrade the printer to our heart's desire. So I have to give the edge to the Trudon in terms of electronics. However, I would love to see these companies just use off-the-shelf components. It'd be nice if these had a standard Big Tree Tech Octopus and standard Big Tree Tech tool boards. That would make them more versatile and more compatible with more things, rather than these proprietary electronics that the manufacturers have used. Speaking of upgrades, one of the main benefits of Voron is its upgradability. There's a clear path for the installation of various upgrades, whether those be developed by Voron themselves or members of the community at large. There's different tool heads you can install, different probing solutions, filtration units, multi-material modules, all sorts of awesome upgrades from the community. All of these things are built on top of the Voron infrastructure. So in order for them to be compatible, there are some geometrical limitations because they've all been designed specifically around the Voron form factor. And one of the main elements of the form factor is the tool head. The tool head on the Trudon 2.0 is a stealth burner, whereas on the Sovel SV08, it is a proprietary tool head. So immediately your upgradability on the Trudon is going to be better because all of the stealth burner specific upgrades are going to be directly compatible. So what makes a Voron a Voron? Well, the entire point behind the Voron project was to design a very highly capable printer which could be built with the tools that you have on hand. All of the components can be sourced from multiple manufacturers. There's nothing proprietary about the design. And that is a core tenant of Voron. You should be able to build a space shuttle with gardening tools. You shouldn't need specialized machinery in order to fabricate the components that go on the printer. So when looking at the Trudon and the SV08, you have to ask yourself, have they stayed true to the core tenant of Voron philosophy, open source? Neither of these printers fully conforms. Both of these have proprietary components that the manufacturers have used in order to make the manufacturing and assembly process easier and more cost effective. Both of them have a variety of injection molded plastic parts. On the Sovel SV08, the entire gantry is injection molded plastic with aluminum extrusions. On the Trudon, the gantry is made of sheet metal aluminum and aluminum extrusions. But whether it be the injection molded parts on the SV08 or the sheet metal brackets on the Trudon, none of these components can be bought off the shelf from any given manufacturer. They are specifically made for these printers. So in this way, they don't adhere to that Voron philosophy of keeping everything open source and readily accessible from a variety of manufacturers. So if either of these companies were to go out of business and one of these components were to break, you may be out of luck in terms of sourcing it again. What they have done in terms of open source is provide these source files. Sovel has done a great job of providing all of the source files for this printer, including step files for all of the parts. Formbot, on the other hand, has not been so forthcoming. They do not have a readily accessible source for this information. They'll give you any of the STL files if you ask, but they've yet to publish the step files or any of the other source files for this design. So in this way, the SV08 is more open source than the Trudon 2.0. Meshing and homing is another area where these two printers differ. The SV08 has an inductive probe, which it uses for meshing and gantry leveling. For homing, it uses a limit switch pin at the rear of the bed. In doing so, it makes the Z offset robust to changes in your nozzle. On the Trudon, we have tap for both meshing and homing. With tap, since the nozzle is homing on the bed and not on a separate limit switch, the Z offset is robust to both changes in the nozzle and changes in the build surface. So the Trudon technically has a superior solution for meshing and homing. Your Z offset will be more accurate and your mesh will be better since you're using the nozzle for all of those measurements. However, one big limitation of the tap carriage 
is that it introduces an extra degree of freedom in the printhead, leading to increased mechanical resonance. This can be visualized through input shaping. We have more secondary vibrational modes, which means that our maximum printing acceleration has to be lower in order to maintain the same level of quality in our prints. So even though the homing and probing are more accurate, you may prefer the more rigid print head of the SV08. In theory, you should have a higher maximum acceleration on at least your Y axis, allowing you to print quicker. All right, so I was just editing this video and I realized that what I just said is actually untrue. The input shaping results on the SV08 without tap are actually worse than the results with tap on the Trudon 2.0. Go figure. The hot end on the SV08 is proprietary and looks to be a derivative of the bamboo hot end. This in theory should be reasonably high flow, but given that it is proprietary, you will be reliant on Sovel for replacement parts. On the Trudon, all of the hot end parts are generic. It comes stock with a clone E3D V6 and a hardened steel nozzle but this can very easily be swapped out for any other hot end on the market that works with the Stealth Burner ecosystem, which is a lot of them. And I would recommend doing so, or at least installing a CHT nozzle, because one big area where the Trudon lacks is in its flow capabilities. The E3D V6 is a pretty old hot end, and the flow rate is very limited. This is one of the main limitations of the Trudon relative to other modern high-speed printers. The other area where the Trudon suffers is in cooling. Auxiliary part cooling fans have become more common on high-speed printers, and they are somewhat of a necessity, especially when printing with PLA. The SV08 has a small auxiliary part cooling fan that's mounted to the rear of the printhead. This will provide supplementary airflow, enabling higher print speeds before we hit the cooling limit. On the Trudon, there is no auxiliary cooling fan, and we're reliant on the small blower fan inside the stealth burner, which is notorious for having insufficient cooling. So two areas where the SV08 will excel over the Trudon are in flow and cooling. But the Trudon could reasonably be upgraded in order to bring it on par. Both of these printers are advertised as mostly pre-assembled, which means that there are a few assembly steps required after the printer comes out of the box and before you can be up and running. With the SV08, that time is advertised at one hour. With the Trudon, that time is also advertised at one hour, but in reality it is closer to three hours. Having not built the SV08, I can't attest to how long it really takes, but from what I've heard, it is pretty accurate at that one hour mark. So you are going to be longer to get the Trudon up and running relative to the SV08. Another key difference between these two printers is in the bed. The Sovel has a PCB bed heater, whereas the Trudon has a thick aluminum slab with a silicone mat underneath for heating. So in theory, the flatness of the Trudon bed will be superior. I have less than 0.1 millimeters of deviation on my Trudon 2.0. Whereas on the SV08, according to reports, it can be as much as 0.5 millimeters of deviation over the extent of the bed. Combining the superior flatness with the superior probing solution, the first layer on the Trudon is likely to be better than we'll see from the SV08. In terms of value added features, we do need to give credit to Sovel for including a camera by default. The Trudon doesn't have one but it is easy enough to add a USB webcam by plugging it into the Big Tree Tech Pi. Overall, I'd say the Trudon feels more like a Voron clone, and the SV08 feels more like a derivative. There's elements of the Voron design, but they've diverged quite substantially. And in doing so, they've taken away a lot of the ease of upgrading that you normally have in a Voron. And instead of the Voron community mods being compatible with it, you're going to have a whole new host of Sovel SV08 specific mods, which at the given time are more limited given how new this printer is. So you need to ask yourself, what am I hoping to get out of a printer? Do I want to jumpstart the build process of a Voron and then continue on from there upgrading it? Or am I happy with a Voron derivative pre-assembled and I'm going to leave it as is? If it's the latter, I think you'll be happy with the SV08 at its lower price tag. If you want something that is closer to the original Voron design, I think the Trudon is the way to go. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Please let me know down in the comments which of these options you'd prefer. The Trudon at a slightly premium price tag, but closer to the original Voron design, or the SV08 at a lower cost, but with more proprietary components. And is there anything I missed in my comparison? Since I haven't been hands-on with the Sovel, there's probably a few features of its design that I haven't yet had the chance to appreciate. So if you do own the Sovel, or you've looked into it more than I have, maybe you can offer some additional insights that I haven't been able to provide. At any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my future videos. My name is Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.